Hello everyone, this is Reinhard Keil. I'm working for ARM on Embedded Tools. And my this year's Dev Summit talk is about CI, CD, and ML Ops workflows for IoT endpoint development. And my talk contains um, first an overview of the types of testing and the overall benefits of CI and ML Ops. Then the challenges with the hardware-based approach for CI and CD testing. And uh, I bridge over to the benefits of the cloud-based CI and CD test automation systems. And then talk about the challenges of MLOps lifecycle management for machine learning applications. Then I'm pleased to introduce a, a new product from ARM that we call ARM Virtual Hardware Targets. These are precise simulation models for validation and verification of complex software algorithms. So it allows you to test a complex application. Uh, we have for this system also a cloud native infrastructure that allows you to integrate this in your test automation systems. And to enable complex testing, we have created virtual interfaces that allow you to repeat IOs. So it has an IO streaming interface that finally enables test automation. And what's also important is that you can migrate this software from the simulation virtual hardware target to the physical production hardware. And I will show you how this is done. Then I, I uh, show you a usage example so that you see how this works in, in real life scenarios and end with a summary. So what are the types of testing? This is here summarized on this slide. There is the uh, unit testing. Where you test little chunks of, of your code and you have integration tests where you combine parts of your software together and see how they are working together. Then there is a, a system and black box, black box testing where you deploy your software to the final system and check if it works as expected. And then there is a combination of these tests that is called regression testing. Usually it's a suite of tests that uh, run then continuously when you change some of your application. And uh, the CI flow means actually that you integrate uh, all the tests that you have and run them whenever you make a change in your application. And in the industry, it is known that this CI flow actually uh, improves product quality. However, there is an initial effort. And this initial effort gets easier with the products that we, that, that we offer. So that actually it's more economical to start with um, this type of testing. So why do we care about CI testing and why is this so important um, with hardware? Actually, there are cheap hardware boards available. They enable testing and most of our embedded engineers do a talk testing on this type of hardware boards. If you want, however, to automate tests, then you end up with a um, setup. I, I show you here on this picture the setup that we have for our debug testing. It's actually a board form connected to a dedicated server. And this server equipment is uh, costly. It is about $5,000 per year that we, we pay for this type of equipment. Now, if you want also to simulate IO behavior, so repeatable inputs, then you need extra, um, extra hardware. Here is a setup from National Instruments. It's a test automation system. This test automation system can then be connected to hardware. And ultimately, you can automate then your tests. But uh, frequently, this breaks. And then you need human interaction, which means this test automation based on hardware is not economic. It is just not feasible. And therefore, we did explore how, um, how the infrastructure would look like when we built this on our simulation technology. And simulation technology has, has many benefits. So we call this um, virtual hardware targets. And it is faster. You don't need uh, flash download, for example. It scales when you bring it into the cloud and you can actually run tests in parallels. 
it's more re reliable because you cannot break um, simulation models, whereas hardware can fail. And it is flexible. You can execute it on a local computer or on a cloud server. You see here some of the timing benefits that you get with uh, virtual hardware targets when you run it on a single system or on two parallel systems. To make this feasible, we provide an environment in the cloud. It is actually a complete setup of software tools. Um, there is then a project workspace that you can use. And uh, in this project workspace, you would load the resources. This can be SAMSI software packs, RTOS, IoT connectors, and the likes, your own GitHub repository, and then actually the test cases. And then you can execute this in a cloud system. And if test cases fail or for test case development, you use your traditional IDE, your local software development for debugging and analysis of test cases. So this is the setup with simulation-based test automation. Now let's go to machine learning. Machine learning, one of the challenges, it, is, it requires real-world data. And the steps to maintain this real-world data um, and to deploy a new model and verify and validate this is called MLOps. So you see here in this circle all the steps that are uh, needed to maintain the data sets for machine learning applications. And also these machine learning applications need checking in the final target system. Um, this is here called in this diagram mod model evaluation and system validation. And with our ARM virtual hardware targets, these two steps can be simplified. They can be um, put into the cloud system because most of the machine learning steps are anyway in the cloud. And you see also the step data collection. Also here, we believe that our technology helps you to get there. Why is data so important? This is shown on the picture on the right side. Um, machine learning algorithms make decisions basically at the end of the day. And they can only do decisions in areas where correct training data exist. Therefore, when you have blind spots because you didn't have this training data initially, then the machine learning algorithm needs to be retrained based on what I call here new experience. And for this complete MLOps flow, you need an effective way to actually run through it. Um, this is very comparable with a CI test flow. And in this way, you can actually add new information. Here we show, for example, that the cat is not detected because it was not part of your initial training set. Now, what are ARM virtual hardware targets? Let's, let's explore this one. So this picture shows the components of the ARM virtual hardware target system. In this case, it's a Corston 300. This is our first deployed system that we offer today as a beta release. It contains a Cortex-M55 with Trust Zone and Helium instruction set extensions. It also has our Ethos U55 on board, so you can actually utilize the neuronal network processor. On top of it, we have memory and peripherals, and we have a thing that is called virtual I.O. This virtual I.O. allows you to stream data into your test application and the application that you want to validate. It has also an interface for simple data values, and it has a socket interface which allows you to connect this to the internet. Also, the system has a debug interface and connects to MDK, DS, or GDB debugger. And we have a tool that we call Event Recorder. So these are the components of the system itself. We combine this with developer resources. Here we deliver I.O. drivers, test scripts, and uh, CI, CD integration um, examples and test report tools. And we have this whole system available as an AWS cloud service. So you can hook it in into your on-prem or into cloud-based CI systems uh, with uh, the uh, final target C, C++ compiler and build utilities that are included in this box. 
What is the virtual streaming interface? So the virtual streaming interface is actually a very simple interface, but uh, flexible, which allows you to stream all types of data. The uh, implementation examples that we show first are for the audio use case. And so there is, for example, a Python test script that uh, feeds in an audio test file. And this audio test file uh, ends up then on the Cortex-M side in an audio input peripheral driver. This input peripheral driver behaves from the logical perspective exactly as a real-world um, peripheral driver for audio inputs. And therefore, the algorithm under test um, needs no modification. It can run on final target hardware or in this test environment with the same logical behavior. And as I said, this is very flexible. You can actually uh, tailor it for your own use cases or you can modify it as needed for your application. So this is what the virtual streaming interface does for you. Now the complete setup of a test system is shown in this picture. And here we show also internet con connectivity. So you can actually run an application that connects to a cloud service provider, for example. And this application could contain a voice recognition algorithm, for example, and uses then an audio driver that maps to this virtual streaming interface. You can also have LEDs and switches to control some of the behavior. These switches can be also manipulated using a graphical user panel or with Python scripting. So you have flexibility for your test environment. What's also in the picture is a thing that we call event recorder. This uh, allows you to cap capture program events in your application. It's um, to a certain extent a sophisticated printf feature, but it delivers you also timing information about uh, when the output happened and you can uh, filter these events. So this is uh, basically the setup. You can, uh, in this setup, we show actually an Ethernet driver, and therefore you need a TCP IP spec, but frequently um, internet applications or applications that connect to the internet require directly a socket interface as shown in this picture. So the TCP IP stack is no longer needed and you actually can connect uh, without a TCP IP stack with this virtual socket interface to the internet. This is basically the setup that you would have in, in devices where a radio is integrated and delivers you already the internet connectivity. Now, how do you get from the test hardware to physical hardware? So from the virtual hardware target, so the simulation test hardware, to the uh, physical target hardware. And to allow this, we have actually um, program layers. For the simulation, you would use a virtual layer and the virtual drivers, so the drivers that I have shown you in the picture before, you can change this layer to a board layer where you use the hardware drivers that have the same behavior as the virtual drivers. And these drivers are then configured with the device SDK from the silicon vendor. So you have the pinout and things like this configured. And you can switch back and forth between these two uh, environments, so between virtual layer and board layer. And you see in both pictures, we create an event log file. So you can actually verify that the same behavior of your application is also exposed in the real hardware, not just in simulation. And when you want to integrate this in the final hardware, in the final system, production system, you will need more software and more drivers. This is shown in the target layer. And also in this system, you can use the event log file to validate that the complete integration of the complex system behaves correct. So this is the benefit for the whole setup. Now let me give you some usage examples, some uh, feeling of what you can do with this virtual uh, hardware targets. And a uh, usage example that is shown in this picture is basically the software stack that would run in, uh, in a smart speaker. 
uh, where you have actually a digital microphone array, an audio front end that does noise can cancellation. Then you may have some beam forming in the, in the system, automated gain control. Then the actual machine learning component, uh, the speech uh, feature extraction and the neuronal network that does the keyword detection. So this is basically the audio setup, the audio component for the microphone in a smart spe uh, speaker. And this type of software you can test on, on virtual hardware targets where you have then the benefit that you can verify the correctness of the software algorithms. They are compiled with the same compilation settings and run on a simulated ARM processor that is validated uh, from ARM and behaves exactly like the final hardware ARM processor. You can also do a performance comparison. You can actually check if an algorithm A or B is better in this type of setup. Now, we don't have such a complex system, but what I will show comes close. It is actually a TensorFlow MicroSpeech example that uses uh, one microphone. And uh, we show here how this virtual streaming interface works. We have an audio test file that streams data via this virtual interface to the software under test. And you can switch the same software to a microcontroller hardware, so to a physical board where you have then a physical microphone, an audio front end, and an audio driver that is connected via I2C in this case. So it uses a different hardware interface, but the logical behavior is identical. The logical behavior is shown on the right side of the, uh, of the slide. We have an audio buffer that has uh, blocks and actually the blocks are rotating um, and therefore, this is the input streaming for your audio algorithm. But as I said before, you can actually tailor the audio buffer handling and the drivers as needed. So the example that we show is just one use case of this virtual streaming interface. What we also did in the application is we have annotated the applications with uh, so-called start and stop events. What uh, the start and stop events do is they give you timing information of your algorithm. Um, they show minimum and maximum um, execution time and uh, things like that. But uh, to be fair, it's better to show you this in action. So let's start a demo video. This is um, uh, running in, in MDK. So this is our microcontroller development kit. We run this micro speech example first in the standard ARM instruction set. And uh, the screen is quite busy. You see here multiple things. Um, on the right side, there is the raw events that come out of this system. So you see actually uh, the event annotations. The event annotations also have values. So you can transmit values with it. And these values tell you, for example, uh, what, how the algorithm was executed. Then there is an event statistic window. This event statistic window shows you the timing between an, an start and a correlating stop event. You see the number of calls, how often such a slot is called. You see the minimum and maximum and average uh, execution time. So you can actually identify whether an algorithm um, depends from the data set or whether the algorithm always has the, uh, the same execution time. And uh, in this way, you can verify um, the behavior of your application and see if the timing is correct, if you can optimize, for example, data handling in your application, because actually the application or the algorithm doesn't need much, much time from your processor. Then we have also uh, the terminal output window. This is uh, from the application itself. And you see here that uh, we detect words. And actually, the, the, the micro speech example that we are using detects two words, the word yes and no. And uh, this data is streamed with a wave file, waveform file into the system. And this waveform file contains also noise and uh, some other words that should not be detected. So you see actually the correctness of the algorithm execution. 
Now let me switch to um, the SAMSIS NN library. SAMSIS NN is an optimized library. Uh, we can use it instead of the reference application here and it is optimized towards uh, this processor. So it uses the Helium features of this processor and you can also validate if the algorithm execution is correct using this uh, SAMSIS NN implementation. So it's an optimized algorithm and actually it shows you that uh, uh, the information or the, the execution is uh, still identical. You will notice uh, the simulation speed that was before in real time, almost one to one of the speed of the processor has now, is now a bit slower. This is because with this Helium instruction set actually the um, simulation time takes longer, but the execution speed on the final hardware would be actually faster. Now let's enable more features. Here is uh, the floating point vector instructions and run it again. And again, we capture the information of the execution using the event statistics. And I will show the summary anyway in a minute. So again, you can run the tests and uh, verify for correctness. So now you see the test runs even slower because we use more features from the processor. Uh, however, uh, to be fair, this test still is, is quite fast uh, compared to a um, test on physical hardware where you would need to flash and run it on hardware. So here you see the test results. The SAMSIS NN application implementation is a lot faster and then the Helium application. What you can also do is you can use our Amazon service and this is shown next. When you do a commit to a repository, then actually all these tests that I have shown you on the desktop can be deployed to these uh, GitHub actions in this case. And you can run the same tests on GitHub uh, with our Amazon service and actually identify the correctness. What this means is when you make a change in your application code, you commit it, you get a cup, a cup of coffee, and then you get the test summary. So that was the demo video. Now let me summarize what you can do with, um, with the ARM virtual hardware targets. This is a summary of the workflow that I have shown you in the demo. We have actually the option to use our Kyle Studio also uh, for connecting to boards on your desk. But what I have shown you in the demo was the classic MDK toolchain that is actually full featured and it connects to both the physical hardware target uh, or the virtual hardware target. So you can actually deploy with the system to bespoke hardware or you can run the validation on the virtual hardware targets. I have not shown you how easy it is actually to switch to the bespoke hardware, but all you do is actually change the software layer that connects to the board. And once you do a GitHub commit, it kicks off the tests in, in uh, the cloud service using GitHub Actions and shows you the test results. So this is the complete setup. And if you have a test case failure, you can uh, use the classic tooling to analyze uh, such a test case failure. So let me summarize also what are the complete developer benefits. Um, you have the benefit you can test without hardware. Uh, early software development is therefore possible. But today there is actually also a hardware shortage in the industry. So evaluation boards might not be available in the quantity that you need it to actually give it to every team member. What you can also do is you can select the optimal uh, target device and analyze workloads. You can retarget applications to production hardware. You can verify for correctness so that the algorithms execute as they should behave. You can precisely repeat over and over input patterns in a CI CD test environment and analyze the software behavior with the event annotations. And ultimately this gives you means to evaluate the performance, compare speed, identify timing issues or 
uh, optimize resources. To learn more, visit arm.com virtual hardware targets. And then I would also like to point you to related speech. So Jason does actually um, more on these virtual targets. It shows how it uh, works. Then we have a workshop with Kyle Studio. And um, we have also a talk about the latest innovation in our microcontroller portfolio. So this is the end of my talk. Thanks for attending it. And I wish you a good day.